Good morning. Welcome to the worship of the church on this fourth Sunday of Easter. The fourth Sunday of Easter is traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. When we uh, take a break in readings from the Easter appearances of Jesus after his resurrection on the third day, and we turn back to his teachings on how he has promised to lead and guide his people, even during uh, the darkest times. And so we pray that in our worship today, uh, the Good Shepherd would speak to you, and that by faith, you would hear his loving, tender, guiding voice. We begin with hymn number 473. Paschal Lamb that sets us free is sacrificed, O keep the feast of freedom gallantly. Let Alleluia's leap, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia again. Sing Alleluia, cry. Alleluia, Amen. Let all our lives now celebrate a feast, let malice die. Let love grow strong, anew and great. Let truth stamp out the lie. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Again, sing Alleluia, cry aloud, Alleluia, Amen. Let all our deeds unanimous confess Him as our Lord, who by the Spirit lives in us, the Father's living Word. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia again. Sing Alleluia, cry aloud, Alleluia, Amen. Our order of service is divine service setting one, which begins on page 151 in our hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you. And therefore, he forgives you of all of your sins. As a called and 
and an ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray Psalm 23 together. At the end of the psalm, we join in the glory be to the Father. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We sing hymn number 740. Jesus, little lamb, ever glad at heart I am, for my shepherd gently guides me, knows my need and well provides me, loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name, day by day at home away. Jesus is my staff and stay. When I hunger, Jesus feeds me. Into pleasant pastures leads me. When I thirst, he bids me go. Where the quiet waters flow. Who's so happy as I am? Even now the shepherd's lamb. And when my short life is ended, by his angel host attended, he shall fold me to his breast, there within his arms to rest. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this week is from Acts chapter 2. The disciples devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, 
They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 2. This is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in singing the Alleluia and verse found in our hymnal on page 156. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in confessing our faith along with all of Christ's sheep, his flock, according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day, number 709. We sing stanzas 1, 2, and 3.
the King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness filleth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth, and where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish oft I stray, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God your Father in heaven and your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are so many voices out there competing for your attention, for your mind and your heart. Whether it's billboards or advertisements saying, think this, buy that, invest here, believe this, watch this, listen to this. There's so many things out there uh, that seek to captivate us. One way of dealing with it is the philosophy of postmodernism. In the 1960s, postmodernism began with a number of French philosophers who looked at all the different incompatible uh, truths and ideas that exist in the world. And they came to this uh, provocating, co provocative conclusion that there may be no objective truth, uh, but there is only interpretations of the truth. Well, that may be an interesting philosophical experiment, you can't live that way. We have to have agreed upon truths, and indeed there is objective truths. Either a building's design and structure will stand or it will fall. But if you believe or follow postmodernism, uh, it's really hard to know what is true. And even though that term is not necessarily a household word, postmodernism, uh, it is pervasive. What started as a small group of French philosophers, uh, that idea traveled to uh, colleges, universities, in the study of humanities, and it made its way from there through the students into homes, to families, to workplaces, to children. In Postmodern thought, since there is no objective truth, the way you communicate is not using reason and facts, but according, but power and force. And so uh, postmodern thinkers have said that if you want to convince other people, you don't have to be true, but you can be powerful or loud. Or if you repeat yourself enough, saying the same thing over and over again, People will believe you. We live in that kind of world. There's so many voices competing for our attention. And when we're confused, and we often are, we need direction. For example, when we're trying to sort out the layers of bureaucracy, trying to file unemployment or getting help during a furlough, we need direction uh, at what to do, what are the proper steps to take uh, to protect ourselves and our loved ones from coronavirus? When do we isolate? When do we get tested? How do we care for our loved ones that are isolated at this time? This is a world that is very strange, and there's a lot of uncharted territory at, right, at this point in time. There are so many different voices saying, do this, do that, don't go here, it's okay to go there. It's confusing. We need the direction 
of a shepherd. Shepherd, shepherding, it's not a very American thing. If you have the time today, try this little experiment. Go on Google and try searching for an American shepherd. Uh, you'll see hundreds and thousands of examples of a uh, mini American shepherd, a breed of dog. You'll see lots of dog pictures and uh, discussions from kennel clubs. You might even see a recipe for an American shepherd's pie but you'll see very little about a real shepherd, somebody who cares for sheep. On the other hand, if you Google a Palestinian shepherd, you'll see hundreds of real people with a real way of life, with real voices caring for real sheep in a real place in the world. Shepherding uh, is real in Palestine, just as it was so real and tangible for many of Jesus' hearers. But it's strange and foreign and mysterious to us today. But that's perfect. Because we live in a strange, foreign, mysterious world right now. And we need a voice to lead us out of it. When we first met Jesus, he appeared strange and radically different from all the different false shepherds that are in this world. All the voices that seek to claim us with loud voices, seeking to claim us by their force, seeking to repeat the same lie over and over and over again until we believe it. Jesus isn't like that. Jesus is the good shepherd who comes with power, but it's a power that's cloaked in weakness. Jesus doesn't make himself the loudest person in the room, but simply by his presence, by his authority, the crowds were hushed. Jesus doesn't speak loudly, he speaks gently. Come to me all who labor. Come to me those who are heavy laden. Come to me you who are sick and distressed. Those who are confused and distraught. Come to me and I will give you rest. My burden is light. My path is easy. And Jesus doesn't uh, repeat or harp on the same note uh, or uh, hobby horse point. But Jesus makes hundreds and thousands of points and teaches as many lessons. Jesus reveals the whole counsel of God. And along his way, on his journey, Jesus gives lessons to his disciples and it's clear that they don't understand it. But rather than wait for them to understand, he keeps going. And he leads them to Jerusalem. He leads them to the cross, into the empty tomb. And when Jesus is revealed to them as their crucified and risen Savior, all the dots start to connect. And they remember what he was trying to teach them. Jesus doesn't repeat himself. Jesus preaches the whole counsel of God. And the whole counsel of God, uh, it's found in Jesus Christ, for he is the fulfillment of the books of Moses, the Torah, of the prophets and the Psalms. All of these prophesied that it was necessary for him to suffer, to die on the cross, and on the third day rise from the dead. In Jesus, we see a shepherd radically different than the thieves and the robbers and the hired hands that are so common in this world. Uh, whereas the hired hands flee when there's danger. Whereas the thieves and the robbers seek to seal, to steal and destroy, Jesus comes in care and love for his sheep, even sheep that have made it their habit to wander following their own personal truth. Jesus seeks out his sheep and he lays his life down for them. And of his own accord and authority, he takes it up again. Dear Christian, Jesus is your good shepherd. He cares for you. He died for you. He sought you out. From the day of your conception, he sought you out and he claimed you by your baptism. He claimed you personally. 
all the thieves and the robbers and the hired hands in this world are selling lots of products, speaking with loud voices, repeating their old lines, uh, their shenanigans. But they never know us. They never speak to us personally. Jesus calls you, dear brother, dear sister, by name. And he still directs you. He speaks to you personally, daily, weekly, with his word, with his voice. When you began your Christian journey, that word, that voice was strange. But day after day, Jesus opens up his word to you and reveals how passionate he is about your life. So much so that even when we fail, even when we wander and stumble and fall, he picks us up through his forgiveness and grace and mercy. You hear his voice. Jesus, sheep, do not listen to the thieves and the robbers of the hired hands. There's many of those. But we, you have been trained to listen to Jesus' word alone. You know his voice. How? By its fruits. I know a man uh, near my hometown who takes care of sheep. And one time, uh, back in seminary, I was sharing some of my doubts and concerns uh, and personal anguish. And uh, I was asking him how I could know what ideas were true and who I could believe. He didn't have an answer to those questions. It's hard to know who to trust. He said, Scott, you need to test the ideas, test the spirits. Do these words, do these sayings, do these teachings give you peace in your heart? Do they lead to comfort and assurance? Or do they lead to doubt and despair and conflict and anguish? Your brothers and sisters, who are you listening to in your lives? Are the voices that you are hearing, are they coming from thieves and robbers and hired hands? Or are they coming from Jesus? It's not always easy to know. But to the voices that are seeking to claim your mind and your heart, do they cause conflict and doubt and despair and anger in your heart? Or do they give you peace and forgiveness? and healing, and comfort. Hold fast, dear brothers and sisters, to the words of Jesus. For in him there is peace and abundant life, now and forever. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. In death's dark veil I fear no ill with thee, dear Lord, beside me. I rod and staff my comfort still. I cross before to guide me. Thou spreadst a table in my sight, thine unction grace bestoweth, and oh, a transport of delight from thy pure Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their need. 
Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we come before you begging for your mercy, your grace, and your strength. We give you thanks that you have not left us alone in this lonely and dark world, but you have blessed us with a good shepherd by sending your son to be born of Mary and born in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth and teach in Galilee, and die in Jerusalem. You established your church with his sacrificial death and with his mighty resurrection. Even during this time, when the church is scattered throughout the world and praying for deliverance from coronavirus, grant us true piety and devotion so that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor and remember the blessings of the fellowship of your church. Guard us against all enemies of your word that seek to attack us, disturb us, lead us to doubt or fear, but keep us on the narrow way guided by your staff forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we come before you asking not only for our blessing, but for the blessing of all the citizens of the world and indeed for the whole planet. We pray for our governor, Tony, for our president, Donald, for all those who serve in advisory committees, for health professionals. We pray for police and firefighters and first responders. Be with uh, those of our own fellowship who are battling disease, depression, loneliness, fear, uh, financial uncertainty. We pray for those who have requested our prayers by name, particularly Lori and Mary, a friend of our sister Deb Dutcher. We also pray for Oliver Howell, uh, who's recovering from a fall, uh, the father of our brother, uh, Oscar Howell. All these, O oh Lord, we commend into your gracious hands, trusting that you will hear us for the sake of your Son, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that at all times, even during times of confusion or doubt or grief or guilt, we would remember the life of thanksgiving. For by the life of your Son, you have revealed that it is truly good, right, and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious Easter resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying death, he destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has revealed himself to be our Good Shepherd. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Following the live premiere of our service this morning, we'll have drive-through blessings to go here at Zion in our parking lot. Uh, we invite you to join us as you're comfortable between 10.30 a.m. and noon. We also have available uh, an opportunity for offering, as well as a bulletin with updates, announcements, and devotional thoughts from Zion uh, for this day and the coming week. If you have any questions, concerns, or prayer requests, as always, feel free to call us or send me an email. I look forward to coming communications about uh, our process and our plan for gradually opening up the worship life of this congregation to groups of 10, uh, 50. And uh, we pray that according to the Lord's time, uh, even the multitudes would be able to gather here and receive the Lord's gifts, his blessing, and his uh, precious body and blood together in one fellowship. We close our worship with hymn number 735. Thankful hearts raised to God. 